P.J. Lynch was born in Belfast and is now one of our leading illustrators of children's books. With Christmas on the way, we visited P.J. Lynch and entered a world where art, a fairy tale, and perhaps Christmas presents come together. I always knew I wanted to be an artist, but I was thinking in terms of something like Leonardo da Vinci. And then I went to art college and I realized that um, that wasn't the scene anymore. You know, it had been out of date for about 300 years. I drifted more towards the graphic side of things rather than, um, rather than the fine art and the painting. And it wasn't until I went to uh, art college at Brighton that I realized that I was pretty well suited for illustration. There were a lot of uh, tutors there who were into kids' books. Uh, Raymond Briggs was one of the best known of them. And uh, I suppose a lot of us drifted into kids' books that way because that was what the, the, the tutors were doing. They kind of influenced us that way. So whenever I left college, uh, it was natural that that was one of the things that I had to go at. sat down and written some stories myself and uh, I've never sort of been, felt really confident with any of them to take them the full way to get them published um, but it's a direction that I will want to move into sooner or later but at the minute um, I've mostly done uh, classic stories uh, and I've done a few written by uh, contemporary authors um, but I enjoy working on the classic ones, mostly because um, they're familiar stories. It's, it's, it's comfortable um, ground to work on. They aren't necessarily all set in sort of medieval fairy time, but uh, I enjoy the feeling of nostalgia you, that you get with a slightly older story. East of the Sun, West of the Moon was a, a story that I, I came across. It was a, an old Norwegian story. And um, I, I just loved it. It had all sorts of great elements in it. You know, um, the four winds come into it, and this girl travels to each of them. And uh, there are uh, hideous uh, trolls in it. Uh, so it, it had everything, beautiful girl, handsome prince, all this kind of stuff, everything that I would really want to illustrate. But at dead of night, when she heard he slept, she got up and struck a light, lit the candle, and let the light shine on him. And so she saw that he was the loveliest prince one ever set eyes on. And she fell so deep in love with him on the spot that she thought she couldn't live if she didn't give him a kiss there and then. And so she did. But as she kissed him, she dropped three hot drops of tallow on his shirt. And he woke up. Snow Queen has just come out um, last month. Um, I started work on it maybe about a year ago. When I was asked to do it, and I, I, I immediately knew the person that I wanted to pose as a Snow Queen. It's a friend of mine who lived across the road from me, and she had that really good Hollywood kind of glamour about her, you know? And uh, I knew that was just the look that I wanted. I wanted a sort of Hollywood vamp with that sort of icy, beauty about it. So I approached her and asked her if she would model for me. And uh, that gave me the basis to work from, the, the, you know, the basic uh, poses and the shape of hands, things like that. The walls of the palace were made of the driven snow, its doors and windows of the cutting winds. There were a hundred halls, the largest of which was many miles long, all illuminated by the northern lights. They were all alike. Vast, empty, icily cold, and dazzlingly white. In the middle of the empty, interminable snow lay a frozen lake. It was broken into exactly a thousand pieces, and these pieces were so exactly alike that it might well be thought a work of more than human skill. The Snow Queen always sat in the center of this lake when at home. I'm working on a book called uh, Catkin by Antonia Barber. It's the first time that I've tackled 
a little cute cat as, as the hero of the, the book. And that sounds very twee, but it's not actually that kind of uh, story at all. It's, it's a kind of a retelling of the uh, Persephone myth about um, a kidnapping of a child in this case who is brought down to the underworld and the underworld people down there want to hold on to this connection with the, the world of the humans. I use my girlfriend all the time for modeling and uh, I use myself all the time. Uh, anybody who's handy yeah, gets roped in. My mum's always very good about it. In Catkin, she, she posed as the wise woman. Also, my little nephew, I, I, I got him to pose as the baby. And it's, it's a baby girl in the book, but I don't think he'll mind too much. <laughs>